Welcome to Mathematics with Ams. Uh, today's topic will be a grade 12 topic in the uh, South African syllabus, mathematical syllabus, differential calculus. Introduction. Calculus is one of the central branches of mathematics and was developed from algebra and geometry. It is built on the concept of limits, which will be discussed in this chapter. Calculus consists of two related ideas, differential calculus and integral calculus. We will only be dealing with differential calculus in this chapter and will explore how it can be used to solve optimization problems and finding rates of change. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and give me a huge like. Right, for interest sake, some historical background, take note this is for non-exam purposes. Now, of course, the very famous mathematicians Leibniz and Newton were the two men who were responsible for the development of calculus. Now, the calculus controversy was an argument between the mathematicians Isaac Newton and Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz over, over who had first invented calculus. The question was a major intellectual controversy which began summering in 1699 and broke out in full force in 1711. Leibniz has published his works first, but Newton's supporters accused Leibniz of plagiarizing Newton's unpublished ideas. Leibniz died in disfavor in 1716 after his patron, the elector George Ludwig of Hanover, became King George I of Great Britain in 1714. The modern consensus is that both men developed their ideas independently. Right, let's start discussing limits and let's look at the first part of limits. So when dealing with limits, we only care about where we are going and not whether we get there. Listen carefully, where we are going and not whether we get there. Now, if you move towards the edge of a cliff, just, just imagine you are moving to the edge of a cliff. And so the limit of your movement will be where you cannot move any further without uh, falling. Just, just remember, just imagine you're walking towards a cliff and of course your movement will be limited when you reach the edge because if you go over the edge or beyond the edge, you will kill yourself, isn't it? So mathematically in brackets, you can say then LIM for limit and at the bottom, so the limit of movement and at the bottom as distance approach zero, see that arrow there, will be at the edge. So I hope that makes sense. Look at the third bullet. I've started off with a rectangle and then I add in the second shape, I add half of the previous. And in the third diagram, I the red one is half of the blue and so on. So if I start again, so in the second drawing, the blue is half of the white, the red is half of the blue, the green is half of the red, etc, etc. Now, can you picture what's going to happen here? If I have to draw more of these uh, rectangles, it will start to move towards an enclosed rectangle. Can you see? So therefore, the limit of this little exercise of this shape, you can imagine, will be another rectangle. So mathematically, the limit of the big figure as all the half figures approach infinity, how they move infinitely you add half of half of half of half of half the limit will be a rectangle it will never go beyond a rectangle but its limit will be a rectangle so the starting point for understanding calculus begins with the concept of a limit so from the idea of a limit the whole of calculus develops into a masterpiece of mathematical precision Let's now focus on this fascinating concept of a limit and see where this all leads to. So if you look at the following function, the f of x equals to x squared plus 1, then you should recognize a parabola because you see a quadratic function. 
Now clearly, if we select any value for x, let, let's say x equals to 2. You can choose any value, really negative, positive. Then the corresponding y value will be when you substitute, isn't it? And so for the corresponding y value will be 5. So, if we now consider values of x to the left of your 2 and to the right of your 2, if these values of x are substituted into the equation of the quadratic function, it will be possible to determine to which y value the graph will approach. And of course, you can use this with your calculator. So if you look at what we have there, look at x less than 2. That means you're approaching uh, a, a 2 from the left hand side. So you first use x as a 0, then you substitute, then you get a 1. Then if you put in a 1, you get a 2. A 1,5 gives you a 3,25, 2, 5, etc. If you put in maybe a 1,99, you get 4,96. And if you put in maybe a 1,99999, you get even much bigger values. So what you, what you notice here, it seems like as the x values approach 2 from the left hand side, the function is approaching 5. It is moving closer and closer to 5. And the same on the right hand side. If x is greater than 2, that is now on the right hand side of 2, so if you put 3 into the, into the function, you get a 9. If you put in maybe a 2,1, you get a 5,41. If you put in a 2, you get a 5. You see, so again, this function is also approaching 5, but this time from the right-hand side. It should, be, it should probably be clear to you by observing the pattern in each table that as the x value approaches 2 from the left, the y values are approaching 5. As the x values approach 2 from the right, the y values are also approaching 5. So the number 5 is referred to as the limit of the graph of x, because they both approach. So when you approach from the left or from the right, it will never exceed the 5. So the 5 will then be the limit. So if you do a straightforward substitution, limit of x squared plus 1, if you replace x with a 2, then of course you get a 5. So the limit of the function is therefore the value of y to which the graph approaches as the values of x approach a certain value from both the left and the right. In advanced course in calculus, the limit concept will be explored in greater detail. It is sufficient for our purposes to understand just the basics of the limit concept. We will now discuss some further examples involving limits. Look at the example, uh, the function of the f of x equals to 1 over x. Now immediately we all know that division by x is not allowed. So we need to bear that in mind. So if x is a natural number, so we're going to use all natural numbers if you want to. But so if x is natural numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4 to infinity, and you substitute those 1, 2, 3, 4 into the function, you'll get 1, a half, a third, a quarter. Now you'll notice these fractions are moving closer and closer to zero. So therefore, as x approach infinity, so therefore the limit of 1 over x, as x approach positive infinity, will be zero. Then I got a few activities for, I will advise you to look at those three examples. Try and you use n as a natural number and see what you get. You can even make some sketches on this and see, but it is advisable for you to go and practice on these just to get a better idea what do we mean by a limit. Right, so now we look at some limit laws. So the limit of the function as x approach a and the limit of another function of g also as x approach a exist. And let c be a constant. So c is a constant value. Look at the first uh, limit law there. Then in square brackets, the limit of the f of x plus the g of x 
as x approach a is therefore the limit of the f of x as x approach a plus or minus the limit of the g of x as x approach a. In other words, you can, I don't want to use the word uh, distributive law here, but you can find each function's limit individually. You will see with examples like that. The same with the second one. If we have a c as a constant in front of function, then that constant can be brought in front of the word limit because it will make, make no difference in our answers. Thirdly, if you multiply two functions, the f of x times the g of x, then again, you can find the limit of each one individually and multiply the two answers. Number four, even with division, you can find the limit of each one individually in the form of a fraction. But remember now, the limit of the g of x cannot be zero. We all know why. Division by zero is not allowed. Right, number five, if we have an exponent, f of x to the power of n, then the entire limit can be raised to the same power. So please take note of that. And n is a positive integer. Number six, even with search, the, the, the nth root of the limit can also brought into, and then the entire function with limit can be under that n. Right. And then, of course, number seven, the limit of a constant is the constant. And number eight, the limit of the variable is whatever it is approaching. In this case, it's approaching a. So the limit of the variable x as it's approaching a is a. Let's look at example a there. So the limit of 2x squared plus 4 as x approach 1 will be straightforward substitution into 1, into x. So the answer is 6. And even in a fraction, you just do a straightforward substitution and you get the answer of 0. Third example. The limit of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 is x approach 1. You notice this one is a bit different because if you substitute x with 1, you're going to get in the denominator 1 minus 1, which is 0. And of course, you know that is not allowed. So therefore, something else must be done here. So in this example, I will have to try some other mathematical techniques. In this example, factorization is working. So if you factorize the numerator as sum and difference, you get x plus 1, x minus 1. And now you can cancel the x minus 1, and now it is possible to find the limit. So be careful with this type of example. Very important that we must take note of that. Because if you look at the, the sketch there, you will notice that uh, the drawing makes it very clear why we had to factorize. Otherwise, we would have had problems. Look at the next example. The limit of 2h plus 3 squared minus 9 over h as h approach 0. So again, similar to the previous, you know that h cannot be a 0. So I need to do something else. So therefore, first get rid of the brackets, regroup and collect like terms, and then factorize h or 4h as a common factor. And then the h will cancel, and then, of course, we can take it further. Look at number e, x cubed minus 27. Again, x cannot be a 3, so therefore, I need I to recognize x cubed minus 27 as the difference between two cubes. So do that grade 10 factorization, and at the bottom, take out negative 1 as a common factor, and therefore, I can cancel x minus 3. And then I can solve that one. Look at example uh, number f. The limit of a constant, be careful now, is not uh, 2. The limit of a constant is the constant. So the limit of 7 is 7. Doesn't matter what it is approaching. The limit of 10 is 10. The limit of 12 is 12, and so forth. So please take note of that. So even like the in G, the limit of 9 is 9. The limit of 8 is 8. Limit of 10 is 10. Doesn't matter what it is approaching. Then in conclusion, there's a lovely exercise which I will advise you to work through just so that you can get used to the limit concept 
and also how to solve problems based on limit. Because once you can master this, of course, the next progression in calculus will be the gradient idea. And once I've, you've done gradients, you can bring limits and gradients together, and then you can do what we call differentiation. So for now, we will conclude here. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Watch it a couple of times, and then it will all make sense. Right. Okay, guys. Don't forget, again, to hit the subscribe button and give me a big like. Ahmed Suleiman, signing off.